Good morning, everybody. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio, sign to land in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And I am so happy today to have on the show James Bradley. How are you doing? Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Listen, uh, James and I, this is not our first interview. We've actually had, this is our second interview about a year and a half ago. Uh, he um, uh, came on and we talked about his two China books, The Imperial Cruise and and um, uh, uh, The China Mirage. And I read both of the books and they were amazing. I'll post that link in the article uh, on my on, on on my blog so you can you can uh, you can listen to it and it's just wonderful. But anyway, in in the interim, uh, in the year and a half uh, that we. Uh, um, have not uh, had him on the show. He has come up with this wonderful new podcast program, which I've also watched or listened to, called Untold Pacific. And I really wanted the fan, friends, fans, and followers to have an opportunity for him to tell us about this wonderful new program. So, James, thanks for being on. Where are you? I'm in New Zealand in the Bay of Islands. I'm outside here by the ocean. Visiting wow. uh, my daughter, and New Zealand's everything they make it out to be. Yeah, I hope to visit one day. Hey, listen, I, I love your program, um, and and I know you've just kind of got it got it started. Please tell us about Untold Pacific and the genesis of it, and what and who you know who what and and who are your muses. Well, I. Uh... I wrote four books about the Pacific. My dad fought on Iwo Jima. I went to school in Japan. I hitchhiked across Asia when I was 20 <laughs> years old. And so I ended up writing four books about the Pacific. And then I was down in Vietnam researching my fifth book. And I had an old neck injury that got worse. And I can't write anymore. I can't read. I can't oh, bend wow. my neck very much. And so my son said, hey, dad, you've I had a professional speaking career, which I did, and he said, you know, all my friends love your stories, you're a storyteller, let's do a podcast. So the name of the podcast is Untold Pacific, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's stories about Americans who went out across the Pacific to Asia, you know, China, Japan, uh, Iran, Vietnam, Cambodia, Philippines, Taiwan, you know, all over the Pacific, and it tells their stories. It's from my four best-selling books and my 40 years of uh, dealing with Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, they're, they're, they're really powerful. How do you find your topics and the people you talk to? You know, I mean, Jeff, is you know better than anybody, uh, penetrating into Asia is a different story. So, for example, when I you know, wrote my book about China, I went to China and I started to hang out and knock doors and talk to people. And <laughs> as you know, you meet one person, especially when you're writing about war. If you find one person that was in a regiment or a platoon or a, a, a squad or whatever, he knows the other people who are in that uh, organization and there's, and there's records and there's phone numbers and there's addresses. In Vietnam, it was very difficult. I almost killed myself drinking tea for almost <laughs> a year, hanging around, talking. You know, guys like me did a lot of damage in Vietnam. Yeah, and I, I was up by the DMZ, uh, by the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and they're still kind of secretive about things. And they, you know, they're not, uh, let's say, eager to talk to guys uh, uh, like me. But I, I made my way in, and then you meet one person, and they mm -hmm. do the second one, and and uh, that that's the way it goes. So, I I really enjoyed my job, which was to you know to interview these people, but it allowed me to penetrate into these various uh, cultures in Japan and China, uh, Korea and Vietnam, the Philippines. Yeah, I tell you what, you're being very modest about, you know, being able to uh, get into get into the lives of these people, because I've so far I've listened to three of your shows, Vietnamese women returning, uh, facing the Vietnam War, which was a one on one interview with a, with a, a, an American combat veteran named Rick Carnes and morality of war. And I mean, they're really powerful and intimate. I mean, you really are able to pull out 
get out of these people. I mean, just some of the most amazing and let's face it, sometimes shocking and and troubling stories. But it, um, just you know, just tell us about just tell us how you know how you how you how you how you how you do stories like this. You know, this might sound funny, but uh, it was because of of two things in history about my father. Uh, Number one, my father fought on Iwo Jima. And so people think, well, that's wonderful, you know, patriotic and everything. That was a massacre, (laughs) you know. Iwo Jima was a massacre. 84% of my dad's uh, platoon uh, were casualties. You know how? Guys just being blown up. It was horrible. And he never talked about it. When he came home, my mother said he cried in his sleep for four years shivered and cried in his sleep and he died not ever telling anybody about what he did on Iwo Jima and I picked up the phone and I started to call guys and another thing was that my father had been a funeral director and that sounds funny but I was confronted (laughs) with death you know I knew the neighbor man who died and I saw him alive and I saw him dead and I realized, you know, these things happen. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm laughing, but sometimes when it's morbid, you all, you, it's it's comic relief. It's amazing. Well, it, I didn't know that. Really but you know, it's life. I yeah. mean, and I was able to talk to veterans. You know, I mean, I mean, really, a lot of uh, especially like younger relatives, uh, sons, daughters, uh, grandkids of veterans. You know. The, the the veteran dies and they say, well, I never talked to him. Well, you know why they never talked to him? It was too sensitive. Grandpa mm-hmm. couldn't tell you the icky story about death because nobody wants to talk about death. Mm-hmm. Well, then don't talk about war because mm-hmm. that's the business of, of war. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I wasn't fascinated by war, but my dad fought on Iwo Jima. So now I'm over in Japan talking to Iwo Jima uh, Japanese veterans. Who fought and your then, dad? China, where we fought, and Vietnam. My brother was evacuated. He was in the last rites in Vietnam. He he did live, but I'm out in the jungle talking to people who are fighting in the same area. You know, I met I met I met uh, people Vietnam like that Vietnamese woman in that one mm-hmm. interview. Had six bullets in her spine. Well, maybe my brother put those bullets in her spine. Mm-hmm, so I'm yeah. not afraid to talk about the reality and skirt the fact of death. It's war. That, that's the mm-hmm. business of death is the business of war. Well, the, the three that I've listened to and I plan on listening to uh, the others are just really powerful. And I can tell that even even during the interviews, you're also very, you know, uh, drawn into their stories. And um, and uh, it's, it's just they're very they're very intimate and they're very very revealing and uh, they tell they tell a much larger story about uh, about the human condition i think you i think you already asked this question you answered this question but it does seem to be a family affair because i keep the email alerts if you sign up on your website which i of course will post untold pacific here uh, is jack bradley is that your son that's my son who called me up he's in the united states i've i've been living in ho chi minh city and he called me up and said, let's do a podcast, Dad. And, okay, uh, well, there you go. So I All was thinking right. of Jake Rogan, you know, and I thought, I'm not smart enough to do a podcast. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 tell the stories, the yeah. untold stories. So that's the name of it, Untold All right. Pacific. All right. Well, speak, speaking, of, speaking of Untold Pacific, tell us about your logo. It's um, a white Chinese sort of a, a stylistic China, a white Chinese bridge on a reddish background. What was the inspiration for that? Well, again, you know, my son uh, got the designer to do that, okay. but it's a, it's a bridge. And the idea is, you know, I left, I left my home in Wisconsin when I was 20 years old and I went across that Pacific bridge over to Asia. I went to school in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. My father went across that bridge mm-hmm. and my, really, my pitch when I speak to audiences in uh, in Asia and America is that that bridge is too, too rickety. We have too few people going across that Pacific bridge. Mm-hmm. We need to build, I mean, we've got the two biggest economies sitting on the same lake on that Pacific lake. Mm-hmm. And we need more people going across that bridge. Mm-hmm. We need more understanding and make that a strong bridge of understanding. That's the future across yeah. the Pacific between Americans. Yeah. 
Well, your books have told very powerful, very, very, you know, powerful and truthful stories about uh, the history of the United States and um, East Asia. So uh, I'm sure this podcast will be a wonderful um, supplement to your to 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 your literary work. Uh, one final question: um, uh, uh, Why audio and not video? Well, look at my face. Do you think anyone really wants to look at this stuff? I mean, that's that's a big problem, you know. But you know, can I tell can I tell you something about getting older and then having a son and then doing this project? When I uh, my dad died in the '90s, and I found uh, papers and and things that he had never talked about. And that was the genesis of my book, Flags of Our Fathers, that Steven Spielberg and Clint Eastwood later made into the movie Flags of Our Fathers. Yeah. Well, when, you know, I wasn't an author when I found that material. I had never written a magazine article. I had never written for the school <laughs> newspaper. So, and I had come from the speaking industry. So I thought, how could I make this a speech? And I contacted professional speakers who said, get a movie made. So then I did more research, oh, okay. and I cold called a guy in Dallas, Texas, by the name of Ross Perot, and ah. I I cold called him, and he picked up the phone, Ross Perot, and I said, Mr. Perot, I said, you know Hollywood, I got the story behind the flag raising, the number one photo in history, let's make a movie, and he said, Bradley, you can't go to Hollywood, they'll steal from you, you got to write a book, and it's got to be heavy enough, you drop it on your foot. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, Mr. Perot, I, it should be a movie. You know, the photo of the flag raising, that's on film, and we should make a movie. No, Bradley, you got to write a book. It's got to be heavy enough. You drop it on. Well, I called him seven times, and he listened to my pitch seven different times. And every time, he was Ross Perot. No, Bradley, you, you know, and finally, I, I understand, Mr. Perot, it's got to be heavy enough. So the first copy of Flag <laughs> Our Fathers that came out, I sent to my mother. The second copy I sent to Ross Perot. And then my son, years later, after I hurt my neck and I can't write, said, Dad, let's do a podcast. Well, that's that's how I started, you know, back in the 90s. I wanted to I wanted to be a speaker about these subjects. Uh, I never imagined. Okay books okay. so you know, chinese say history is a circle right yeah. so i started out wanting to speak i couldn't because ross pro told me i had to write a book which ended up the fourth <laughs> book and i'm I got old enough to come around in the circle and now i get to speak on the podcast untold <laughs> Well, James, I really am. Thank you for being on the show. I mean, for, and for all the fans of uh, China Rising Radio Sign Land out there, it really is wonderful. And, and, and you know, they're 30, 45 minutes long. Um, you know, he asks wonderful questions. He gets wonderful answers. I've learned so much. And um, again, I, I, I feel like I've I've uh, en enhanced my life by listening to the stories uh, that um, James is able to uh, get these people to tell. So thank you so much, James, for being on the show today. And I'll uh, blast this out to the world. And uh, and hopefully you'll get a f hopefully hopefully more people will uh, um, uh, benefit from uh, your wonderful work. OK, well, thanks for spreading the word about untoldpacific.com. <laughs> thank you. Jeff. Bye bye, James. Talk to you later. OK, thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.